Well, hello everyone. My name is Gregory Harnett, and I am going to teach you to become your own stockbroker. Fire your stockbroker, become an investor, become a trader, and I mean that as T R A D E R, not a traitor, unless you want to be a traitor to the uh, <laughs> investor establishment set up by investment banks and that. We're going to teach you how to take it all the way from an IPO purchase to just managing your 401k. So well, let's get ready. What we're going to learn first is where I'm at. I'm at my home. Uh, I teach stockbrokers and insurance agents. I have since 1999, but I'm also an insurance agent. I am also uh, assisting individuals who need help with their portfolios. But I don't charge for that. I'm a teacher. I like to stay that way. So what we're going to do on this first session is learn what you can do and why I think anybody can fire their stockbroker. Now, first of all, what is a stockbroker? If we look at somebody who sells, who affects transactions, that's all they're doing. They're soliciting for transactions. They're a salesperson, flat out, a salesperson. A stockbroker is a salesperson because they're not obligated to certain, they're not held to certain rules and regulations that a financial planner or an advisor registered investment advisor would be. So your typical stockbroker who has a series seven or a series six license is just basically putting you together with somebody else or selling from their own inventory of the company. Broker dealer. A broker dealer is the investment firm that you open up your brokerage account with. Now, well, what does broker and dealer mean? Broker means if you want to buy 100 shares of IBM, for example, I'm not, anytime I say this or talk about companies, I'm not condoning any company, okay? Let's get that clear. This is the first session I'm having. Everybody should know that when I talk, I talk basically for an example only. Now, you want to buy 100 shares of IBM. You go to your broker and you say, hey, uh, Fred, buy me 100 shares of IBM. Just get me the best price you can. Well, that would be a market order. And he goes, okay. He puts it in, bingo. You got 100 shares of IBM. Not very difficult. Now, he's going to charge you a commission on that. When you buy and you sell, he's going to charge you a commission. If you're dealing with a broker live, and not doing it online for yourself, it's going to cost you much more. Okay, we're not talking about a five ninety nine trade, unless it's five hundred ninety nine dollars that they charge you for commission, depending on the size of the trade. So, here's the thing: what is a dealer? A dealer, same scenario. You go to your broker and say, "Fred, buy me hundred shares of IBM." So, it's all happy to, you know, we make a market in that will buy or sell. And buying or selling, they're a dealer. So they don't put, they don't type it in and send a message to the New York Stock Exchange for the trade to commence and get it and bring it in from somebody who's sold. They just go to their own vault, take out a hundred shares, send it to the transfer agent and reissue it in your name. They sell it to you. Or if you want to sell your shares and they're the dealer, they will buy. They don't charge you a commission. They charge you a markup or a markdown. When do they charge you a markup? When you're buying from them. If it costs $50 a share, maybe they're going to charge you $51 a share. The $1 is the markup. Okay? If you're going to sell to them, the market is 50 they're going to give you 49 for it. They're going to say $50 minus the markdown. 
of $1 per share. Okay, that's how they make their money. That's, you know, be, making a market in it as a dealer or as a broker, just doing a trade. The vast majority of trades from a stockbroker are as a broker. They charge you a commission. Uh, Charles Schwab does it. Fidelity does it. Vanguard does it. All of these brokerage firms that are discount brokerages do it as a as a broker. Now, they could do it as a dealer if the company has a position in the security that you're interested in. But you'll see that on the uh, confirmation that it was a markup or a markdown. That means they are a dealer in the security. Okay. Now, we'll get into that a little bit later, but I want you to understand the, uh, the participants in the market and what you can do to replace them. Now, if you do decide in the end to fire your stockbroker, you've taken my, my, my uh, videos and you've reviewed them and maybe even got my book and you read through that. And by the way, that book is called the Investor Handbook. And it's comprised of a lot of the materials that the stockbroker learns when I teach them. I took the materials right out of my own book for the series seven and the 66. And these are license exams that they have to take. But I added a bunch of stuff and I took out some stuff. I took out the regulations that you don't need, that you don't need, unless you wanna get a career in it, okay? And then I put in trading strategies and programs that I don't teach them. Why don't I teach them? Here's the, here's the secret. They don't pay me to teach them. They pay me to get them past their securities exams. And I'm not gonna stuff their head through a lot of trading that, well, that's their boss's job. You know, if they wanna learn trading, go to their boss, go to their mentor, go to the mentor in their company. And that's the way it should be. I'm not going to wean them on the markets. I'm going to give them just exactly what they need to pass the test. And I'm not saying the bare minimums. I take the exact outline set up by FINRA and the SEC and NASAA. These are the regulatory boards. These are the uh, <laughs> SROs self-regulatory organizations that assist the SEC in education and registration and licensing, okay? So they make outlines on all the different licenses that they're required to have, the, that the people are, are required to have. And I get those outlines and I put it right in the books. I put exactly what they're saying is gonna be on the test in the books. So if you want, you're going to know more than the stockbroker. And that's not going to be hard because I'm going to tell you a little secret. I taught a class at a major, excuse me, broker dealer. And uh, I was itchy. That was not a cue to say, oh, <laughs> secret. No, <laughs> had an itchy nose. Hello. Uh, <laughs> but. I taught a class and they had, they wanted to get into the Series 7, which is an, a, an up, a higher license than they had. Well, they needed that because they wanted to manage other agents and they couldn't get commissions on those agents that they were going to manage if they didn't have this better license. They all had a Series 6 license, which was for mutual funds and variable products, certain insurance products that are securities and and, and, uh, and other items, not they couldn't sell stocks and bonds and, and stuff like that, and options or stuff like that. They, they could only sell the mutual funds and the, the package securities. You know? So I taught them product over the weekends, three weekends. I invited them to their own location, their own training room. And I showed up and I taught them the products, but then it got time to teach them the whole class. And all eight of them were in there. 
we took one of their big conference rooms and they said, oh, by the way, Greg, don't need to worry about mutual funds and variable products and stuff like that. We've, we've been doing it for six years plus, you know, some of us have been doing it for 10 years. And I said, okay, okay, but I need to get a, uh, I need to get an evaluation to see where you're at. So take this test. And I gave him a test. And they all flunked it. Now, they were going for the Series 7 license, and it's obvious that they would have failed that because they didn't finish my test, my course. And it's not unusual. I wouldn't expect anybody to pass that. But I gave them the Series 6 test, and they all failed it. Which is clear to me that once they take their test, once they get their license, they forget everything. They just focus on the products that they have to sell and how to sell it, how to be a salesperson. And that's why you got to fire your stockbroker. I mean, this is, this is clear, as a, clear as a bell, clear as day. And if you want, I can help you all the way. So here's the thing. What you need to do right now is just gather some books or, you know, get yourself a notebook, uh, get yourself, uh, you know, a binder or whatever, and start taking information down on these. And then learn to ask questions. Because when we're a child, as opposed to when we're an adult, like I am, we change. Yeah, we get older, more wrinkles, more fat, where I shouldn't have it, you know, and uh, less hair, well, no, actually, I got the same hair I had when I was probably five. But what we do is we ask much more questions when we're a child. Because that's the learning periods. That's when we're learning. That's when our mind is growing. And somebody told me that when you're taught something, there's a little crease put in your brain. And then when you learn it and learn it and learn it again, the crease gets a little deeper and it's ingrained in you. That's how they mean it's ingrained in your brain. Okay? And that's what we need to do to get to you. They didn't ingrain it. They just learned it, spit it out for a test and forgot about it. And I challenge anybody to go into a brokerage firm today, pass out a test and tell me that their, class, their people passed I would say probably 10% would pass on the same exam that they took before. And you don't even have to have it too comprehensive. I wasn't very strict in those questions, but they blew it. <laughs> they blew it really bad. So the idea is to learn this, not to study it. Learn it. Get it in your head. And put the concepts together in a pattern so that you can develop a trading program, so that you can understand how you can improve your financial future. So what are we gonna study? First, we're gonna study equities. Equities are uh, stocks. It could be common stock, preferred stock. It could be REITs, real estate investment trust. Uh, ADRs, American Depository Receipts, ADRs, which are simply foreign stocks sold in the U.S. We'll show you how it's done. And we're going to learn some others. Um, we're going to learn, after that, we're going to learn debt securities. So equity, our stocks, that's equity. That's uh, ownership. One word for equity securities, ownership. And debt securities would be bonds, uh, money markets and uh, bills, notes, you know, treasuries, municipal governments, uh, like your local governments, bonds and stuff like that. So debt securities would be next. And then we're going to learn mutual funds and other packaged securities, packaged securities. I mean, a mutual fund is basically a bucket of money that's invested in various investments. It could be stocks, bonds, other mutual funds, 
options. There can be a lot of different investments in there. Money market. Could be money markets in there too. Then we're going to learn options. And options, options scare a lot of people. But options, wow. Options have to be the most misunderstood security in the world. After that, we're going to learn some variable products. And variable means it's a security, but it's also an insurance product. So it's like you take a security and you take a life policy, life insurance or an annuity, and you put it in that closet back there. Okay. You put it in the closet back there and you let it merge. And that's what it is. It's a merging of a security and an insurance product. Very, very strong uh, products. But we're also going to learn life insurance and annuities on a fixed basis, meaning it's not a security. A regular insurance agent can, can sell it. And there's some you know shaky ground in there with equity index you may have heard. Beautiful product. I prefer it to variables. And we're going to learn why. And it's all about risk. <laughs> because there is not. Uh, so we're going to learn about a lot of different items. And along the way, we'll pick up some more products and maybe sub products within there. But it's more than just five or six different types of investments. That's just a category. And there's just so many things to learn on them. The whole idea is how to manage your financial situation profitably. But here's a clue on what you're going to do. I want you to take a, de a dartboard and I want you to assign different areas to different stocks or different investments. And then I want you to close your eyes and throw three darts at it. It could be companies, it could be types of investments, whatever. And those three darts, that where that lands, that's where you should concentrate. Because it's an exercise. I'm not saying that's what you have to put into your portfolio. That would be ridiculous and irresponsible. I don't know you. Uh, and that takes me to the next situation is, I don't know you. And neither do all these gurus on TV and the radio and anybody sending you an email about, hey, you know, this guy does this and you should do it too. No. What works for you? What are your limitations? You've got to know yourself. In the industry, there is a rule called know your customer. And what it means is you have to learn about the customer. You have to, that stockbroker should ask you financial and non-financial questions to get a good picture about who you are. Okay. What risks you can handle, what risks you cannot handle, and what your goals are objectives are, you know, what's your risk tolerance? Okay, I can accept this much risk, no more. What's your risk aversion? Risk aversion, okay, this is my risk level, okay? Uh, do you have risk aversion? Um, yeah, I'll take this much risk, more, but it better be more money to me. Potential, potential. Okay. Can't guarantee, but a risk aversion means also I have two investments. The potential is the same, 8%. Which one do I choose? That's the potential. Well, this one has this much risk. This one has this much risk. Which one do I take? Obviously, we're going to take this one, the one with lower risk. That's the second part of risk aversion. But the other part is saying, I'm willing to take more risk, but it has to have an acceptable amount of more opportunity. That's risk aversion. Risk tolerance, hey, right here. That's the risk level. Don't try to push it up, but it, keep it right here. Okay? That's risk tolerance. Now, what you need to look into is when I live stream or my regular videos. 
And they're going to be about 25 to 30 minutes long on each of them. And there's probably going to be five or six in each category that I said, for example, equities. I'm going to put one just on stocks, common stock. I'm going to put one on preferred stock. I'm going to put one on ADRs. I'm going to put one on REITs. I'm going to put one on trading stocks. I'm going to put four maybe in debts, debt securities, maybe five. I'll put treasuries and I'll put corporate bonds and I'll put municipal bonds and and then we'll put in, uh, you know, different money markets, you know, stuff like that. Mutual funds, there's a lot of different types of mutual funds. And we'll call them investment companies because investment companies include uh, exchange traded funds. Okay. So open and closed end investment companies. And then options, well, there'll be one section alone on uh, puts, one on calls, one on combination uh, multiple option strategies and one on single strategies, single option strategies. Now, the next video, I'm going to do that right after this because I read an email and I saw a video about that email a couple of weeks earlier. And it absolutely ticks me off that this video is out there because it should scare people. Instead, it's going to bring a lot of people into that. And that's the wrong part because that video talked maybe four, five, ten seconds at the most on risk. And the rest was, hey, this guy walks in and does this and does that. And bingo, he got money all over the place. Horse crap. Nothing shy of horse crap. And I'm going to expose it and I'm going to show you it. And I'm going to talk about the editor, the author, the, the trading program, or whatever it is. You'll learn about how to do that. But you got to know exactly how to measure the risk. And they did not do that one bit. They made it look too nice. And I swear there was only four to ten seconds in there about the risk. Oh, you may have to do this and this and this and that. No problem. But here's the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to walk into this store. Please, people, wake up. Time to wake up. And this is going to help you wake up. This is going to help you fire your stockbroker. This is at least, at the very least, you should be able to go to these videos and look them up or get in touch with me and say, hey, you know what? We're doing this and this and this. I don't understand what he's doing. Well, hey. You need to know everything that your stockbroker is saying and doing or your planner, whatever they're doing in the uh, in your in your accounts, whether it's your 401k or whether it's uh, managing your regular investment accounts or your rollovers and your retired or, you, you know, you need to know exactly what's going on. You need to be able to accept the risk, understand the risk and how much potential there is for opportunity, as well as loss. Okay. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, I can make you 20%. Okay. How much can you lose me? Huh? You said you can make me 20%. How much can you lose me? I don't want to lose you. I want you to make 20%. Oh, so you're guaranteeing that 20%? Well, <laughs> I can't guarantee. He better say that, that he can't guarantee it. He better tell you yeah, you have the potential to lose 40%. You know, here's your potential for gain. And then, by the way, uh, it'll be down here somewhere. You know, with this being zero, this being your 20, 40% uh, is down here on the floor somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so this is what you need to do. You need to look into these courses. I am finance guy at finance guy 57 and I'm at Gmail. You can contact me through these, I suppose, also through the chats. And um, you're going to learn a good bit. And I wish you well. Take care, everyone. Class is over.